Dear students, in this section, we are going to discuss one very important concept that is the impulse momentum equation. There are many situations in which the force acting on object is not constant but varies with the time. For example, when batsman hit the ball, the period of the contact is very small but force is huge. You can observe here in this diagram. In this diagram, you can observe the variation of the force between the bat and ball in relation with the time. At time t initial, the ball and bat come into contact with each other, right? And force reaches to the maximum value and finally force becomes zero and that time ball leaves the bat. The time interval delta t that is equal to t final minus t initial. This is t final this is t initial. This time interval is very small. It is of the range of few thousands of the second, although the maximum force, this one, is very large, that is range of the thousands of the Newton. Okay? The force experienced by the ball applied by the bat, that is called the impulsive force, and it can be expressed by the Newton second law. Newton second law give the relationship between the force and change in linear momentum with respect to time. So, here we can write Ft equal to dp by dt. That is the rate of change of linear momentum with respect to time. Okay. Now, we can rearrange this equation. We can write this equation as dp equal to Ft dt. Let us call this equation number 1. So, let us write equation number 1 here. Right. And here we can observe this left side, this dp. dp represents the change in linear momentum during time dt, right? dt is very small time, you can say elemental time. And this is the ft, ft is the variation of the force between the ball and bat, okay? Now we can find the net change in the ball linear momentum due to collision if we integrate both sides with the proper limit. And here you can observe the limits are from P initial to P final. P initial is the initial linear momentum of the ball. P final is the final linear momentum of the ball. And T initial, when ball and bat come in the contact and T final is the when contact lost. Okay. Now we can rearrange this equation further. We can write P final minus P initial equal to delta P delta p is the change in linear momentum of the ball due to collision and in the right hand side we can write t initial to t final ft dt okay this left hand side expression give the change in linear momentum of the ball and this right side expression is the measure of the both magnitude and direction of the collision force this we call the impulse f dt ft dt integral t initial to t final is called the impulse. We can denote this value by j vector. j vector is called the impulse, right? This impulse denote the collision between the ball and bat and direction of the impulse is same as the impulsive force. F is the impulsive force. The impulsive force is a type of the normal reaction and this normal reaction is very large during the contact. And this normal reaction is called the impulsive normal reaction. And the direction of J, that is the impulse, is same as the impulsive force. Okay. Now, we can write the change in linear momentum of the ball. This change in linear momentum of the ball is equal to delta P. Delta P is called the J. That means the change in the linear momentum of the object equal to impulse on the object. And this is also equal to area under the force and time diagram because this is written in the integral and we know the geometrical meaning of the integral. If we draw the graph between the force and time and this area will represent the impulse. Okay. Now, we can write j vector equal to integral t initial to t final f vector dt. We can rearrange this equation further, we can write this impulse equal to change in linear momentum. That is the m multiplied by v final 
minus m multiplied by v initial that is equal to f t initial to t final dt right now we can further write m v final equal to m v initial plus j vector this is the third equation okay and we call this equation as the impulse momentum equation and we will use this equation in case of the collision and deciding the impulse between the colliding bodies okay so up to this point we learn the theoretical aspect of the impulse momentum equation now we are going to take few selected illustrations and through coming illustration we will learn the application of the impulse momentum equation in the first illustration we are going to learn how to calculate the impulsive force so let us move to illustration number 1 this is the illustration the hero of a instant film fire 50 gram bullet from a machine gun each at a speed 1 kilometer per second right mass of each bullet is 50 gram and speed of the each bullet is 1 kilometer per second if he fire 20 bullets in 4 seconds what is the average force does he exert against the machine gun during the period right what is happening the bullets are coming out of the gun at the regular interval that is 20 bullets per 4 second that means 4 divided by 20 that is the time interval between two bullets should be equal to 4 divided by 20 equal to 1 by 5 second initial linear momentum of each bullet when it is in before just firing is equal to 0 because bullets are initially at rest because of the explosion or chemical energy the bullet acquire the velocity 1 kilometer per second that means the linear momentum that is equal to mass multiplied by velocity that means there will be impulse generated by the gun on the bullet and because of this impulse there will be the impulsive force because impulse is always associated with the impulsive force and here we need to calculate that impulsive force so let us move to the analysis part first of all let us calculate the linear momentum imparted by a gun on the bullet that is equal to mass multiplied by velocity mass of each bullet is 50 gram that is equal to 0 0.050 kg multiplied by speed 1 kilometer per second that is 1000 meter per second and that is equal to 50 kg meter per second that is the linear momentum provided by gun on the bullet right that means final linear momentum of the bullet is equal to this much right now let us find the force we know the force average force imparted by gun on the bullet should be equal to change in linear momentum that is delta p divided by time interval between two bullets that is equal to delta p by delta t delta p is equal to change in linear momentum that should be equal to the final linear momentum minus initial linear momentum divided by delta t this is equal to 50 and initially bullet is at rest that is equal to 0 and this delta t is equal to time interval between two successive bullet that is equal to 4 divided by 20 now we can solve this this is equal to 250 newton this is the impulsive force that means to hold the gun the hero has to exert the force of 250 newton right against the gun so this is the required answer now let us move to next illustration in this illustration it is given a ball of mass 200 gram is moving horizontally with 10 meter per second it is struck by a bat as a result it is start moving with the speed 25 meter per second at angle 37 degree above the horizontal in the same vertical plane as shown in the figure right this is the figure of the situation in the first part of the question we need to calculate the average force exerted by a bat 
if duration of the impact is first 0 0.50 second, second 0 0.05 second and third 0 0.005 second and the second part we are asked what do you conclude for impulse of the weight of the ball as duration of the contact decreases. Okay. So, this is the question. Let us move to the analysis part. It is given initially this 200 gram ball is moving horizontally with 10 meter per second and after collision with the bat is start moving with the speed 25 meter per second at angle 37 degree above the horizontal. Right. So, let us make the initial situation, initial motion of the ball just before collision. This is the initial situation, right? And finally, it is start moving at angle 37 degree above the horizontal. So, this is the situation, right? This is the final situation just after collision. We can make the component of the velocity in the horizontal and vertical direction. The horizontal component should be equal to 25 cos 37 degree and this is 25 sin 37 degree. Let us assume horizontal direction rightward as positive x and vertical up as the y direction, right? Now, we can calculate the initial linear momentum of this ball that is equal to mass multiplied by velocity and mass is 200 gram that is 200 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg and velocity is 10 meter per second in the minus x direction. So, unit vector should be equal to minus i cap. This is the initial linear momentum just before collision. So, after calculation, we can write this value as minus 2 i cap Newton second. Okay. This is the initial linear momentum of the ball just before collision. Now, come to the final value that is the just after collision. We can write this linear momentum as this mass multiplied by 25 cos 37 i degree i cap and 25 sin 37 degree j cap, right? So, this is the final linear momentum. Now, we can simplify this expression. We can solve. We can get this value as 4 i cap plus 3 j cap Newton second. This is the initial, this is the final linear momentum. Now, we are in position to calculate the impulse if we use the impulse momentum equation. So, let us apply impulse momentum equation. This is equal to P final equal to P initial plus J vector, right? So, here we can write impulse that is a J vector equal to P final minus P initial. We have calculated the value of P initial and P final. So, here we can write P final equal to this one 4 I cap plus 3 J cap and P initial equal to minus 2 I cap. So, after simplification, we can write 6 I cap plus 3 J cap Newton second. This is the impulse. Now, we can write the average force exerted by bat on the ball that is equal to J vector that is the impulse vector divided by time duration. So, this magnitude can be written as magnitude of this divided by j or in the vector form we even we can write. So, we can substitute the value of j that is equal to 6 i cap plus 3 j cap divided by delta t. This equation number 1. And in the first part, different time interval we need to calculate the force. So, this is the first that is 0 0.5 delta t is equal to 0 0.5. So, for the first value of the time delta t, the average force should be equal to j divided by delta t that means this divided by 0 0.5 and this is equal to 12 i cap plus 6 j cap Newton. Now, the value of the delta t is 0 0.05 second. Now, we can substitute value of delta t here and this will be the 10 times force will be the 10 times you can observe the increment of the force is 10 times and for the third case delta t equal to 0 0.005 second and this value is equal to 6 i cap plus 3 j cap overall divided by 0 0.005. 
and this is the again 10 times of this value right we can observe the force increases if we increase the time duration right so let us move to the second part in second part question is what do you conclude for the impulse of the weight of the ball as duration of the contact decreases and here we can observe as duration of the contact is decreasing the force between the bat and ball increases and it is clear from these result result number one result number two and result number three the duration of the contact between the ball and the bat decreases the effect of the weight of the force effect of the weight of the ball you, because the weight of the ball is constant the effect of the weight of the ball also decreases because weight of the ball is limited and we know the gravitation force cannot be impulsive force and if impulsive force is much greater than the gravitation force we can neglect the gravitation force that is the weight of the ball so in the analysis part or calculation of the impulsive force or force acting on the ball we can neglect the presence of the gravitation force because gravitation force is non-impulsive in nature